Hi, thank you for joining us. My name is Beth Mulam, and tonight I'm talking with my friend Mo on Yet. We are here to share our respective journeys into sport and being active. I'm a graduate from the University of York, and I was privileged to be selected to represent Great Britain at the Tokyo Paralympics in Boccia. I also take part in frame running. Mo, your turn. Thanks, Beth. So I'm Mo. I'm a student support and advice coordinator at the University of York, and I also co-chair the INCLUDE network here. Alongside my roles here, I'm also a student Methodist minister, and it sounds a bit bizarre to say I'm also an athlete. I think the picture shows I'm a very serious athlete. <laughs> We're delighted to be here uh, to talk to you this evening as part of York's Disability Week. Unlike Beth, I'm not an elite athlete, but I do enjoy going out for a run. That does sound like quite a strange thing to say, coming from someone who can dislocate a hip just by sneezing. I do, of course, mean that I like frame running. And this is a sport which is fairly new to England, but it's been around for over 30 years now. These days, we're used to seeing athletes in racing wheelchairs, but in the past, we'd always uh, see athletes competing in standard wheelchairs. For those who aren't able to propel an ordinary wheelchair with their arms, there used to be a foot-pushing wheelchair race where athletes would compete by pushing their wheelchair backwards along the track with their feet, which has some obvious disadvantages, as you can imagine. So frame running was developed for those athletes. It incorporates a seat and a body support on the frame to enable athletes to compete facing forwards on the track and in longer races as well. Frame running was first included in the World Para Athletics Championships in 2019, which was the first time we really got to see it on a world stage for all to see. And it'll be included in the Paralympics for the first time in 2024. It's not a sport re reserved just for elite athletes, though. It is suitable for most people who can't functionally run. And we'll explain a bit more about the sport as we talk. Frame running is still a very new sport compared to boccia, though, uh, which is what Beth does. Yes, boccia has been around a while. In fact, it can be traced back around 5,000 years BC when Egyptians threw leather balls in a target game. The modern game originated in Italy and became part of the Paralympics in 1984. Boccia is one of only two sports in the Paralympics with no Olympic equivalent. And... I was surprised to find out that next to football, it is the world's most popular sport, especially as there is so little awareness of it. I guess its popularity is because it can be played by anyone of any age. It can be a simple game of getting your ball closer to the jackball than your opponent or its elite match with a high level of strategic thought and tactics, similar to a physical game of chess. All you need to play is six red balls, six blue balls and a jack. And, in the case of someone like me who cannot throw, an assistive device called a ramp. I'll explain more about Botcher as we talk. I remember sitting in your office in late 2016 at the university and telling you I had just been to try out frame running and you're starting to grin. I had only just found out about the sport, which was new to England, by chance. So, it was amazing to find someone else who knew what it was and wanted to give it a go. 
How did you find out about frame running, Mu? I'd been going along to disability athletics competitions with my son, Dan, who has cerebral palsy. Dan's an ambulant sprinter, but I'd seen some athletes doing frame running and saw how the frame takes the weight of the athletes and enables them to run. I'd become a wheelchair user because of frequent dislocations. And initially, I didn't think that I'd be able to try the sport. I'd been trying to find different ways to keep active. I joined a gym, but the fitness instructors really didn't know how to enable me to exercise safely. And I even struggled with the recumbent bike. I'd always been a strong swimmer, but swimming was becoming difficult for me by then as well. So I was really on the lookout for a different way to get active. And when I met you, Beth, I'd begun looking into trying out race running, as it was called then. And I think we both found frame running when we were looking for a new sport. But while I was looking to get active, you were looking for a new sport to compete in. Is that right? That's right. I had a setback at Botcher in 2016 when my body kept overheating due to wearing a skin suit. This included wearing a special gauntlet so I could pick up and grip a Botcher ball. Botcher matches take around an hour to complete, so it's a highly focused and intense game. In competition, we might play three or four matches in a day. After beginning to overheat regularly, losing consciousness and having oedema, that's water retention, I had to stop wearing the skin suit on medical grounds. I hadn't realized over the years how much I relied on it to pick up and throw the ball. The result was I just couldn't play any more. At that stage, I was competing internationally representing England. That was really gutting as I had overnight lost some of my identity. Whilst I waited to have my botcher classification reviewed, I looked around for a new sport I could do and that's where frame running came into my life. Thankfully, I was eligible to compete as a botcher ramp athlete so in 2017 started back at the bottom to work my way up the ladder to compete internationally. I'd always be grateful for that upset in botcher. Frame running is a sport I will do for life. How do you feel about frame running in the future? Well, I think I've found a way of keeping active for life too. It took me a while to get used to the frame and to gain confidence on it. But the novelty of being able to move under my own steam and to be pain free is just wonderful. Like you, I was just so thrilled to find something that could help me be so active. I have quadriplegic cerebral palsy, so all four of my limbs are affected. I use a power chair to get around and have always dreamt of running. I came away from my first taster session knowing I could not just run, but now I could fly. I couldn't wait to buy my own frame. I was lucky I was able to buy one straight off, but I know you took longer to get a frame. That's right. The frames are quite expensive. They're about two and a half thousand pounds each. So it's a pretty major investment. I did have to think really carefully about whether to buy one up front or not. In the end, I opted to pay in instalments for my frame for various reasons, but that was easy to set up. There are also various charities and trusts that individuals can apply to for funding. And we were able to access some charitable funding, weren't we, Beth, to purchase frames to set up the club so that more people can try out the sport without that huge cost up front. 
What is brilliant is that the frame is like a trike without pedals. That means you can sit on the saddle. Then with a chest support plate and some straps you can balance on the frame with your legs free to propel you along. Our frames are slightly different as you go cross country on yours. What are the main differences, apart from size and color? Well, there are quite a few. Part of the reason it took so long for my frame to arrive was that I wanted a slightly different kind of frame than yours. Because while you're petite, I am short, but I'm definitely not petite. My frame is slightly wider than standard with wider tires as well, which help me to keep stable on uneven surfaces, which is especially useful on mixed surfaces such as different paths and pavements. There's loads of different frames available now. As you know, Beth, frames are available for kids from about three up to adults over six foot. Basically, the frame can be tailored to the person and to the kind of activity you want to do. For those who do track sprinting, there are super light frames like the ones we've seen in the World Championships. I'm constantly adapting my own frame to suit me. Most recently, I've added lights so that I can go running on winter evenings. I find that I'm getting the cardio exercise that I wasn't getting before. And I don't want to lose that level of fitness that I have. So I like to get out to run as often as I can. We both train outside on the track as well until it's too cold to train in winter, don't we? Well, we do when you're not on your travels with Botcher anyway. It is true I'm away often for Botcher camps and competitions. And like you, I have found enormous benefits from being physically active. I am so much fitter from getting cardiovascular exercise. Before frame running, I had never got out of breath in my life. Now I do it regularly. Running has improved my muscle control, range of movement and reduced pain in my body. I now sleep well. I also found my ability to study improved as I could focus better and concentrate for longer. It has also improved my mental health and self-esteem. What has it done for you from a well-being perspective? Well, I actually think my energy has improved too. You saw me when I first tried out the sport. I'd had an amazing time, but afterwards I was so tired I could barely lift the fork to my mouth to eat my lunch. I've definitely seen improvements in my joint stability as well because I've been working my muscles safely. Mental health wise, I find going out for a run clears my mind. I have a lot on in terms of work, study and family commitments. So I find it's a great stress reliever. I probably shouldn't say this, but I will. Running past non-disabled runners in races really gives me a confidence boost too. It's really great to be able to challenge perceptions, isn't it, Beth? Because most people who see us sitting in our power chairs wouldn't imagine that running is something we'd ever be able to do. We have very different conditions, yet we can still do the same sport. If we are both competing, we do it in different classifications. When I raced for England, I was doing 60 metres up to a maximum of 400 metres. So once around the track, these days in a good hour long session, I can do around two kilometres as well as some social chatting. But no, you often do much further, and you have even done half marathons. Tell me more about that. I started off on the track for practice, and I took part in some sprints, but I quickly realised I could do longer races, 
I started by going along to the park run on campus east and I thought it would take me ages but actually my first 5k only took me about 28 minutes which was a surprise. I went on to do a 10k road race that was a really good one. I got a pie and a hot chocolate at the end of it. I wasn't expecting that either. And after that, I went on to run half marathons and I did my first half marathon in 2019. And that's really my favourite distance now. Of course, because of my condition, I have to brace my knees and one of my ankles in order to be able to run safely without hurting my joints. I did get help from my orthotist to work out what kinds of braces would be most effective for sport. Some of that was trial and error. I do love to get out and about running around York though. And I like raising awareness of the sport too. As I said before, running still feels like a novelty for me. I find lots of people are interested in the frame when I'm out and about as well. So I often end up stopping and chatting to people about it. Frame running's got a classification system, so there's fair competition. The formal classifications for race running are RR4 to RR1, or at least that's what they started off as. So RR4 would be for people like me with physical disability, which is not neurological in origin, and RR1 to 3 for people with neurological conditions like cerebral palsy. I understand now that the IPC classification for competitions like the Paralympics will be T71 and T72. T72 and RR3 athletes are generally the most able and fastest runners, and T71 or RR run, RR1 athletes, which is your classification, Beth, tend to have the most physical limitations. That's right. Oh, disability sport has classifications. That is to even the playing field and make sure we compete against other athletes with similar impairments to ourselves. Boccia is a target ball sport. Played with leather balls on an indoor court the size of a badminton court. In Boccia, there are four Paralympic classifications. BC1, BC2 and BC4 are for throwers who are seated. These are split between those with neurological conditions like cerebral palsy and dystonia, and those with conditions that are not neurological, such as muscular dystrophy or SMA, but are similar in presentation to CP. Then there is the BC3 classification, which is the one I compete in. This is for people unable to throw or kick a ball. We use an assistive device called a ramp to propel the ball into the court. And we get a ramp assistant to support us. The ramp assistant does not look at the game or speak. They can only do what they are directed to do in moving the ramp and placing the ball in the position for release. Boccia is aimed at people with physical disabilities, although lots of other people play too. Not having a classification isn't a barrier to taking part in sport at local level, is it, though? You usually have to have participated for a while before you're able to be classified. I got into the sport from watching people compete in local competitions. What about you, though, Beth? How did you get involved in boccia and sport in general? I first saw people with cerebral palsy running at the Sydney 2000 Paralympics when I was only six. Then I heard Caroline Baird, a sprinter with CP, who won medals being interviewed on TV. I was blown away as she had a speech impairment like mine. I knew then I wanted to be a Paralympian 
If Caroline could do it, so could I. I didn't find a sport I could do until I was ten when I was asked to be part of the local boxer team in the Surrey Youth Games. At that point, I discovered I was fiercely competitive. When I was told it was a Paralympic sport, I knew this was something I could do, and boccia became my sporting passion. Did you do any sport growing up, Mo? Well, as a child, I tried a few things. Gymnastics, because I'm bendy, dancing, and then trampolining, which all unfortunately contributed to damaging my joints, as I didn't have a clue what was wrong with my joints then. I just thought I had dodgy knees. I loved swimming. And I got to know Paralympic swimmer Jane Stediver, who became a bit of a role model for me. But I didn't find a way to take swimming any further. You've been way more committed to fulfilling your sporting dreams than I ever was growing up, though, Beth. How did you feel when, after 17 years of hard work, you mm. finally reached the Paralympics? It was brilliant to have finally had my dream come true. I was honored and privileged to be selected to play at the Tokyo Paralympics. I have been on a huge and exciting journey. 21 years of dreaming to be a Paralympian and 17 years of playing boccia, it was just amazing. I felt like I was in a daze a lot of the time, just wanting to pinch myself. Could I really be here at the Paralympics? I get a tingly feeling even now just thinking of how lucky we were being able to travel to Japan. And the huge amount of work it took by so many people to make it possible. The athlete village alone was amazing. I have never met so many people with disabilities in any place. The one thing that joined us all together was the intent and focus to compete for each person and team to be the best they could be. The competition was so very high. Sadly, I didn't medal, but we came out of the Paralympics 8th and GB is now ranked 7th in the world. It was such an opportunity to show the world that despite everything sport can bring us all together. It can still enthrall and engage us all in a common purpose. I was following your games at the Paralympics, Beth, in the early hours of the morning. It was really exciting to be following your journey, even if I did have to get up in the middle of the night. It's interesting that you mentioned the support of other disabled athletes. I've certainly met lots of friends through sport, including you, of course. You must have met loads of friends, though, through Boccia as well, have you? My boccia teammates live all over the country. We share a common bond, a bit like a family, when we meet up to train for a week or travel to camps. Without the two of us meeting at uni and finding we had a shared interest in frame running, we wouldn't have the friendship we have today. Meeting up at the athletics track most weeks to exercise is also a great way to socialize. Through the club, we have a core of people we see regularly. And new members are welcome. In addition, there is a local boccia club for players with physical disabilities called Jorvik Boccia. New members are always welcome there too. I would encourage anyone to join. Yeah, sports certainly made a massive positive difference to both of our lives, but in different ways. If anyone watching fancies trying boccia or frame running, please do check out our Facebook pages. 
and do sign up for 2022. We'd love to see more people having a go and getting to love sport as much as we do. I'm really sorry I can't be here to answer questions tonight. This session was pre-recorded as I am in Seville at the Boccia European Regional Championships. We are at the beginning of our quest to qualify for the Paralympics in Paris in 2024. So wish me luck. Good luck, Beth. I hope it all goes really well. I will be around at the end of the session tonight to answer any questions uh, if anybody would like to get in touch. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you for listening.